Uh, but we're talking about the Intel Compute Stick. And honestly, guys, I think a review of this thing is kind of just like an overview of the concept and then sort of saying whether or not it works because that's kind of what you want. I didn't spend a ton of time running benchmarks on this because it's kind of familiar territory. This is based on a quad-core Baytrail chip, uh, which is Intel Atom. Um, it's got built-in graphics, everything all in kind of one chip. It's got two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of flash-based storage, and it's on basically an HDMI stick. So it's kind of bigger than a pack of gum, but not much. It fits into your hand. You plug it into a TV, presumably TV with or a monitor with sound or something like that, so that you can get a picture and sound out of it. Um, it's got one USB port and Bluetooth, so you could use either of those means to connect the keyboard and mouse. And it has Wi-Fi, so it's got the connectivity there. And it comes with Windows 8.1 with Bing, which is the sort of free version of Windows that you get on certain devices. And uh, it has an SD card slot that you can, it'll hold, I think, up to 128 gigs of uh, SD card storage. And so you can expand the storage on the thing that way. And uh, then it has a little power button on the side. So you basically, you connect this stuff, you turn it on and you have a windows based PC, like a full system, um, wherever you have like a keyboard mouse combo and a, a TV. Um, so it's kind of a nifty idea. It's 150 bucks as configured, which seems like a, not a bad price. There are some cheap Bay trail tablets that maybe cost that much. Um, and it gives you a, a nice little streamer. You can run Netflix on it. You could use it for maybe Steam in-home streaming, although you have to maybe have a, a either an Ethernet adapter or a better Wi-Fi adapter connected via USB to get like full speed for for that type of streaming. Um, but but you know anything that you want to do with a, a basic computer, it's going to do it. And really, you know, installing software, or running stuff on it, it isn't that bad. Um, the the real limitations of this concept that make it a little weird are you have to have a power source which is a, a usb uh input and so you either you plug it into the wall or like if your tv has a usb a powered usb hub then you can do that i tried it on a monitor that didn't have a powered hub and so i was just creating like a little loop of nothing <laughs> <laughs> like it it didn't work jeff like can i can you just plug power in briefly and then it'll just keep looping around in there <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I couldn't make that happen so I think you need a, an actual a proper power source and then the other thing is that because it plugs in via uh, HDMI but it sticks out a little you're going to have to wind up using probably the HDMI extender that's included for most TVs and things like that so it's going to hang down a little probably it's not going to plug right into an HDMI port but really you know it's pretty compact um, and Jeff Gazer, doesn't this kind of feel like, like this is probably better than your computer that you built for yourself at some point in the past? <laughs> oh this, yeah, doesn't it feel like, like more cores for sure? I mean, yeah, it's full on quad core chip. Well, and this is the Silvermont core, so it's not like a, the original Atom where it was kind of like the per, per thread performance was not good enough to really like be okay. Like this is okay, and it has like a video decoder in it, so playing video is okay. You remember the the old reviews we used to do with like netbooks, where it was like, you know, you'd have like a, a red or <laughs> a green play? for playing different <laughs> video formats, or maybe yeah. a yellow where it was iffy. Um, this is all like they're all green here, unless maybe you go to what 4K or something like that. Um, but the yeah. dis the peak display resolution that supports is 1080p for the graphics, so. And I don't. I think for almost any video format, like it's going to be all green for 1080p. Yeah. Um, so maybe H.265 maybe could be a challenge, but that's that's pretty rare still at this point. And H.264 is sufficient for uh, 1080p generally in terms of of streaming and bandwidth and all of that. So yeah, this does feel like uh, certain things are over. Like this is this is cooked now. Like like the PC for grandma. Like there it is, right? She can take it with her. Yeah. And now uh, this isn't uh, passively cool. That this is inventing in the uh, in the top. No, you know, I thought looking at it that it was pretty much going to be passively cooled. Anything of this size with low power, you would think 
okay, but it has a fan in there because I, I noticed it because I'm using it and it was doing some stuff and I loaded a like Internet Explorer, went to MSN's default page and all this crud shows up on the screen with celebrities and you know it's terrible and and it was running that while some installers are running in the background and it started making noise and, and so yeah it's not perfectly quiet all the time and my biggest concern about this thing is you know the only moving part in it is that fan that blower whatever it is and so that's probably the biggest point of failure on the design in terms of lo longevity and all of that um, but it's not super loud it's not terrible um, it doesn't it doesn't spin up when you're just playing netflix or, or sort of no basic sort of streaming and, no it doesn't know. i i watch netflix on it some and and it, i haven't spent hours and hours watching netflix on it but i haven't noticed that what when you're just doing that it has to be doing like several things like i said or something where it's just a process that's kind of a cpu hog in order for that to be a problem so, you know, this isn't going to run all your games really fast. Maybe any of your good games at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, little There's a indie couple games of Steam or games that'll things. run on an Atom basis. Yeah. But, but it's not going to do that. But, but it is kind of just like for a lot of things, you just plug it in, you plunk it down, and you're done. And it is neat the idea of having one in your bag and being able to just take it wherever and be like, Okay, now we're all going to do this. Like, I guess you probably play Hearthstone or something like that on it. <laughs> Does it play Minecraft? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, that's a good question. I bet it might. I'm going to have to try that. But if I, but if my kids know it does that, I'll never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bit of a concern. But yeah, but it's a neat idea. It's a fun concept. And, you know, like I said in the article, I don't think this is something that happens, uh, like several years ago, um, but Microsoft and Intel are in different different places now than they were then, in terms of understanding the threat from ARM-based uh, devices devices based on Android and iOS, um, and they're willing to sell you something that is a pretty complete Windows PC for a pretty astounding price, and they're packaging them into form factors like this, and even Intel's putting its own name on it. So um, my hope is that they keep making these little sticks and that they improve them and, uh, you know, keep keep getting better. I'd like to see like a, a Haswell or Skylake version of it uh, eventually once they can get into this a reasonable power envelope for this type of thing. And, you know, that's going to cost a little more, but just a fun concept. And I can imagine like having a you small do a core M in there and, for sure. Yeah. I can imagine having a small business and being like, <laughs> okay, I've got like six people here who need to do some basic job. Let's just, that's the, I'm the IT department here. It's your stick. Like, <laughs> hand it in at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that would be it. Uh, or a computer lab or something like that. So it's kind of fun. Um, the only question really is, do you want this or do you want like, they're super cheap, it's like $200 uh, Bay Trail based laptops out there that give you a whole computer that you could then plug into a TV um, or tablets or things like that. It's, the real competition is just other form factors, right? That maybe give you a little bit more of everything you want in a computer without needing external displays and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. It's, it's, I'm going to, keep it around my house and just plug it into stuff and see where it winds up. It's already basically camped out in my bedroom as a, a Netflix streamer though. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a compute stick and it's kind of a fun thing from the, the nut guys, guys who've done the, the next unit of computing, uh, builds for Intel and, um, 149 bucks available now ish, I believe. And then there's a cheaper version with less Ram that, that comes with Linux. I think pre-installed yeah. and right. so you, if you're, if you don't want to, I think it's 99 bucks or, um, I don't remember anyway, cheaper. So if you, if you want something and you don't want windows, you, that might work as long as you're willing to accept, accept a little bit less memory and storage. So that's a compute stick. And, uh, I, I think it's sort of established a new form factor for PCs. If it succeeds, then I expect we'll see more.